One of F1's most famous recent stories, can you call 2009 recent? I don't know, is getting the sports documentary treatment and it's going out on Disney+. Plus. It's the Braun GP story. Remarkable story. If you know it, I'm sure, well, if you're here, I'm sure you do know a lot of it already. If you don't know it, well, I'd say you're in for a treat. And here to help me discuss the story that's coming out is uh, is Val Harinci, deputy editor at The Race and a man who got an early look at the series. Val, you know the story pretty well. You might not know it inside and out, but I think that makes you well placed to tell us about it. And the first thing for me, whenever we're looking at a sports documentary, especially when it's Formula One, I want to know how good a job have they done at staying true to the story. And my scale is faithful recreation versus drive to survive. Yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't going to go in with the drive to survive stuff quite yet because I'm also a big a big skeptic of what they do. But it's you know it's a different circumstance. They they are definitely a lot more faithful than drive to survive. But you have to look at it in in two separate ways. You look at the I think moment to moment editing and general storytelling is how I would say. And in the moment to moment editing, it is better, but sometimes when they tell stories of specific races, uh, specific moments, you notice some strange stuff here and there. You notice a weird radio edit. Maybe that was only in the copy that was available to me and they fix some of that stuff. But sometimes, for instance, you listen to the commentary and the commentator says, you know, Button is a second and a half up the road from Vettel and they show, show a shot where he was like just half the track away. And it, it, it's like it was edited by a person who wasn't completely sure what a second and a half looked like on track. But, you know, that's just nitpicky sort of stuff. As, as far as the general overall story of the season goes, which is more important, it's clearly very faithful. And it's interesting the exact approach they took with it, I think. Because when you think of Braun GP and you think of the most interesting moments and you think of sort of the, the big thing that you need to tell, it's the, the off-season and the shock of bringing the car to the track and finding out that it was lightning fast, right? So there's four episodes. You'd expect that stuff to be almost three episodes, maybe, in a way. And then the rest of the season, them sort of, you know, establishing the early lead and then hanging on to it is almost like the less interesting part of it. But they instead, they space, space out the season fairly evenly across four episodes. And they do, they do genuinely a really good job of still, you know, keeping up the investment, even though the big sort of the big shock and the most interesting part in a way did did happen early on and obviously as we can see from the trailers and the promotional material there's a star-studded lineup of talking heads you know they found a lot of people that they, they've got good time with a lot of the important characters who stands out who, who's the star who shines from the from the people that we hear from yeah a, a fair question and i i want to i want to be interesting in answering it i'm I, I want to say a lot of the lesser known Braun GP staffers, some of them you will recognize, obviously, from their current roles at Mercedes. They do contribute quite well in the, you know, moment to moment stuff, even if it's stories you've heard before. It's just it's nice to hear them firsthand. And Ross Braun is obviously good. Nick Fry, who is the financial guy, is is obviously good. But I think the big hitters are, I would say, Christian Horner unsurprisingly, who just, you know, he, he does his drive to survive shtick again, very much so. So if you don't like that so much, it might, it might grate on your, on your nerves a little bit. But if you do like it, there's, there's more of that. And he's, you know, he's good at it. He's fun. He clearly is aware that, you know, he likes to be the star on camera and likes the to man say likes the camera, things. doesn't he? Loves it clearly. And it comes across here as well. Luca de Montezemolo is very good. The former Ferrari president and Bernie Ecclestone is good doesn't say much but what he does say is you know it's pretty much what you would expect from bernie ecclestone maybe not always the most agreeable stuff but certainly watchable and that's you know that's what you're there for and out of the drivers i'd highlight rubens barrichello rubens barrichello is the most interesting driver interviewee there yeah that's interesting and i think you mentioned montezemolo and bernie there that's perhaps the part of the brawn story that I get the impression they have focused on that isn't always the bit that gets retold is the politics of the whole situation behind it. So you need those guys who are involved in the meetings and the arguments and they're not necessarily going to talk about what they've thought of the car on track. But like you say, Bernie Eccleston, even when he was running F1, he didn't say much, but he made sure that he made a point or he made an impact when he did. Obviously, this has a star, an A-list celebrity host or a Hollywood star host Keanu Reeves, what sort of job does he do? Is he there just to 
to bring in eyeballs or is he committed to the project? He, he certainly brings something unique in a sense that, you know, it's that outsider feel to it, but clearly an engaged outsider. If he's faking it, he's doing a, a really genuinely good job. As a voiceover sort of recording, you know, the narrator, you it takes some getting used to because if you've ever seen a Keanu Reeves film, you know that he has a very specific low range tone, but not because of his slightly unusual cadence. It's not necessarily a narrator tone. So, you know, a it's narrator- It's distinctive, you, isn't it? Very distinctive, very distinctive. If you've seen if you've seen John Wick, you know, it takes basically like four movies to, to get used to the specific way he speaks as that character. But it's, you know, it's, it's good. And as an interview, as an interviewer, he's actually surprisingly good. He's really good. He's engaged. You, at certain points, you sort of, as a, as a Formula One fan, you know, we do sort of, I wouldn't call it gatekeep, but you sort of want to know whether this celebrity knows Formula One and you catch yourself thinking, is this something fed to you through an earpiece or do you, do you legitimately know your stuff? I think there's probably a lot of stuff that was very new to him, but the, the fact that he cares, the fact that he wants to get the, the best story available to him as an interviewer, it really does come across. There's one particular moment that was very memorable to me, and I won't spoil it, but you, I think you'll know it when you see it. He eggs on Luca de Montezemolo a little bit and gets a very good answer out of him. And it's it's such a weird cl clash of worlds, you know, but it's it's really engaging and really entertaining. I think if here's there's a lot of sports docs around, right? So in a way, this is kind of the the unique selling point you get of, you know, sort of 2009 through the prism of Keanu Reeves. Yeah, you've got to do something to stand out. Like you say, there's, there's so many of these. And I think you mentioned there, I think you said it's four episodes. And a lot of these sports documentaries are often more episodes than that, particularly if they have something like a year long or a multi-year narrative to discuss. You've talked about how they've broken the story up. They're clearly limited on time. They can't get everything in and give everything the time it deserves. Watching it, did you feel there was anything where you went, oh, I wish they'd given more time to that or expanded on this or have they balanced it up quite well? Kind of, but uh, not, not critically so. And I'm not a 2009 specialist, so there might be some people who remember that part a lot more vividly and there will be some a moment or two where it's clear to them that this was omitted or this was omitted. Like, uh, Crashgate, was that, two, like, it was 2008, but was 2009 the big fallout, right? So yeah. that doesn't, that doesn't come up. Crashgate doesn't, doesn't really come up. But it, it's it not has really a broad story, is it? It's not really a broad story, but it is, in a way, they do 2009, like, a full season overview, but through, through the prism of Braun. So almost every other big 2009 thing, you feel it does crop up. Uh, one thing that will bother, I think, a lot of people, technically minded people, you know, hardcore Formula One fans, is... There's maybe not as an in-depth explanation of the double diffuser and the legality of the double diffuser and stuff like that as you might like. But I think for a for a Disney Plus documentary aimed at the more wider audience, I think they do just about enough. Um, the one story, as you mentioned, so the part that maybe you didn't expect covered so much, the FIA photo war and, you know, Bernie Ecclestone, Max Mosley, that kind of stuff, it is covered fairly extensively. And well, and that's, you know, that's a good idea. I think it's resolved a little bit sudden. So it's just like, Braun is in a pickle and suddenly, oof, they're not in a pickle. It's like a screenwriter wrote it out very quickly because they just didn't want to bother with this plot line anymore. So they just came up with a, with a neat way of removing it from the story, you know, like they do in some TV shows that are not quite as good. So that's maybe a part I would, I would like more on, but it's, again, I'm nitpicking. It, it was fine. I didn't, I didn't feel cheated out of any sort of detail if anything in some ways despite it being just four episodes i thought there was some stuff they could have probably trimmed a little bit but it not not to any particularly meaningful problematic way obviously the main thing we need to know is is it worth watching is it worth people committing their time to this will f1 fans be satisfied with what they see so val what would your verdict be on the program if you know the story there won't be much there that shocks you it's like a lot of it is if you've read any of the 2009, many 2009 retrospectives around, then a lot of the stories will be very familiar, like the plumber story, the waterlock steering wheel story, that kind of thing. Uh, if you know those, I think there won't be much in the documentary that shocks you. Maybe you don't necessarily need shocking. You just want to relive, relive that fun season and, you know, it gets the job done there. And if you're new, then it is a, a worthwhile introduction and an interesting introduction 
that I think does justice to one of the more unlikely and, and fun seasons in recent Formula One history, if we do use the word recent.